the greatest gift you can give yourself. So simple, so powerful, is sleep. The closer researchers look at sleep, the more they realize how important it is. I want you to realize there are no shortcuts to sleep. We need our seven to nine hours every night. If we don't get it, we may not have everything going according to plan. We need both quantity and quality of sleep. If we don't get enough sleep, and we need to have it good enough. And when we do, our brain is energized. We are cognitively ready for the day. We can do anything. Our brain is healthy. Our body is repaired. We're ready to run, jump, and dance. When we have fantastic, great sleep, we are undaunted by our challenges. And when we go to sleep, our brain, it goes into a different mode. And something remarkable happens. The cleaners move in. They're coming to get rid of all those toxins that have built up in our brain throughout the day. And here they get washed out with the cerebral spinal fluid in wave patterns. And as we know with cleaning, if we haven't got enough time to do all the cleaning, the little bits of dirt get left behind. And in this case, toxins. They hang around the brain and then they cluster together and they become hard and they stay there. They found that with Alzheimer's patients, they had clusters of these toxins. Not getting enough sleep increases the risk of your getting Alzheimer's. Our brain cycles through different stages. As we go through, we go from, we start off with wakefulness into stage one, two, three, which is deep sleep. And then we go all the way back up into REM sleep, which is rapid eye movement sleep, where most of our dreaming takes place and our eyes flutter behind our lids as we dream. Each cycle lasts about 90 minutes, and we need five cycles. You can do the maths. When we are in deep sleep, our heart rate slows down, our blood pressure drops. We produce a human growth hormone that helps repair our bones and our tissues so we don't wake up with aches and pains. And this is fantastic when we've had a really hard physical day or a mega gym workout. And even more than this, really exciting, is our immune system gets a boost. And that means we don't catch those little colds, sniffles, sore throats, coughs, because of the deep sleep. And the deep sleep also helps us embed new learning. So if you're studying for an exam, Deep learning should be your, deep sleep, sorry, should be your best friend. And then we move into REM sleep, the rapid eye movement sleep where we do most of our dreaming. And while we dream, this is when we have our mental recovery, our psychological repair. And because of that, it means our mental well-being is fantastic. Dream sleep is important. Without enough of dream sleep, we, are, we may be lacking in our mental health. So what I want you to understand is that we do cycle, as I said, and they last about 90 minutes. But the ratio between deep sleep and REM sleep varies greatly. When we first go to sleep, our deep sleep dominates. So we get that physical repair first up. And as we get closer to the morning for waking up, we get more of the dream sleep the REM sleep. So if you cut your sleep short and you don't have those full five cycles, what may happen is when you wake up in the morning, thinking is a little difficult, you may feel a bit blurry, and trying to solve problems could be pretty difficult. 
So when we have sleep, I think there's like there's magic in the numbers for sleep. The rule of thumb for calculating sleep is to divide it by two. For every two hours we're awake, we need one hour of sleep. Easy. Now, when we've been awake for about 16 hours, we step into our fatigue zone. This means we should be going to sleep. So let's go for this. 16 hours awake, you divide by two. 16 divided by two, eight hours of sleep. This is where it's fantastic in terms of 16 hours awake, eight hours of sleep, 24 hours. You've got to admit that's magic. It fits so beautifully together. So when we look at sleep, we should be looking at how we um, wake up. When we wake up, sorry, we wake up and we've been awake for too long, we realize that 16 hours awake, we step into our fatigue zone. The Center for Sleep Research discovered that if you've been awake for more than 17 hours, it's the equivalent of having a blood alcohol content level of 0 0.05. If we have a blood alcohol content le level of 0 0.05, we are over the legal limit for driving. And yet, we would drive over the wakefulness limit. When we drive over the wakefulness limit, we are severely compromised with our driving skills. I've got a question to ask you. Let's say you nominate me as your designated driver because we're going to go party. Is it okay if I have one glass of wine? Well, if I've been awake for more than 17 hours, I've just increased the chance of having an accident exponentially. Next time you nominate somebody to be the driver, check how long they've been awake. It could make all the difference. What's even more scary is that when we look at sleep, we have sleep debt, the sleep we owe ourselves. What does that mean? Let's say, for example, if you're a, you need to sleep for eight hours, and instead you sleep for only six, you're two hours short of sleep. We all agree on the maths. What that means is when I wake up, as it's if I've been awake for, for four hours already, so we know that at 16 hours approximately, we step into our fatigue zone. Let's say we wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning. By 6 p.m. in the, after the evening, we've been awake for 12 hours, plus the four hours of wakefulness we've already got in our tank makes us 16 hours awake. Do we go to bed? Do we go to sleep and sleep the extra hours? No, we go out. And by 8 o'clock at night, you are well over the wakefulness limit. And then, perhaps, you could have a microsleep. A microsleep is when your brain puts you to sleep, when you become totally unaware of what's going on. Why do we microsleep? Because we're sleep deprived. And when we're driving, we could be severely compromised. Yeah, I want to emphasize this. I really do, because when we look at sleep, your brain will decide when it absolutely must put you to sleep. You can choose to not drink and dehydrate yourself to death. You can choose to not eat and starve yourself to death. You cannot choose to not sleep. Your brain will put you to sleep when your brain thinks, this is my moment. And it's not going to say, are you at home watching telly? Some research was done by Dr. Eve Van Korter. And she took fit, healthy young men. And she allowed them to sleep for four hours for six nights. A very short space of time. And in that very short space of time, the response to insulin dropped and their ability to, de um, to process sugar decreased. They were well on their way to getting type 2 diabetes. 
They needed to sleep their way out of this problem. What they've also found is that when we've got two hormones in our system, one's ghrelin and one's leptin. Ghrelin tells us when we're hungry, and leptin tells us when we're full. Dr. Van Korter discovered that when you are sleep deprived, ghrelin increases and leptin decreases. What does that mean? Well, ghrelin goes, you're hungry, you're hungry, you're hungry, and you eat. And leptin? Huh? Leptin is not there. And we're well on our way into the fast ride to obesity. I hope you really understand from all of this the elixir that sleep is for good living. And when you think about, well, what can I do for myself? How can I ensure that I have fantastic sleep? We need good sleep hygiene. What is sleep hygiene? Basically, it's sleep routine. So around about 30 to 60 minutes before you need to go to sleep, you need to start going into the relax mode. Now, when I say relaxation, social media is not on the list. We can sit quietly and read, maybe listen to music, maybe watch TV, but no binge watching at night. I want you to also think that our, your room, your bedroom should be cool and dark. And if you're using an air conditioner, realize that air conditioning is really dehydrating. So putting a little bowl of water in your room to help rehydrate the atmosphere can make a great difference to the quality of your sleep. Also, I know some people use apps. They could be the sound of rain or um, fans or waves. Whatever it is, if that helps you sleep, I'd recommend it totally. Use them. The most important thing with um, sleep routine and sleep hygiene is this, that it's the same again and again and again. Your brain loves routine. The more you can make it the same, the more powerful that psychological trigger is to taking you off into wonderful sleep. I really do want you to go out and have a good time. You just need to go home and sleep well. As I said, there are no shortcuts to sleep. You shortcut sleep, you shortcut your health. And when we have the right quantity and quality of sleep, you are always going to have peak performance. Thank you. <laughs>